Hello, it's Agnes and today I'm going to read you my second favourite of all time Neville stories and it's from the book The Law and the Promise. Now, it goes like this. For many years a doctor and his wife dreamed about their stately habitation but not until they imagined living in it did they manifest it? So here is their story. Some 15 years ago, Mrs. M and I purchased a lot on which we built a two-story building, housing our office and living area. We left ample space on the lot for an apartment building if and when our finances would permit. All those years we were busy paying off our mortgage and at the end of that time had no money left for the additional building we still desired so much. It was true that we had an ample savings account which meant security for our business, but to use any part of it for a new building would be to jeopardize that security. But now your teaching awakened a new concept boldly telling us if we could, that we could have what we most desired through the controlled use of our imagination and that realizing a desire was made more convincing without money. We decided to put it to the test to forget about money and concentrate our attention on the thing we desired most in this world, the new apartment building. With this principle in mind, we mentally constructed the new building as we wanted it. We actually drew physical plans so we could better formulate our mental picture of the completed structure. Never forgetting to think from the end. In our case, the completed occupied building. We took many imaginative trips through our apartment house, renting the units to imaginary tenants, examining in detail every room and enjoying the feeling of pride as friends offered congratulations on the unique planning. We brought into our imaginal scene one friend in particular, I shall call her Mrs. X, a lady we had not seen for some time as she had given us up socially, believing us a bit peculiar in our new way of thinking. Our imaginal scene, we took her through the building and asked how she liked it. Hearing her voice distinctly, we heard her reply, Doctor, I think it's beautiful. One day, while talking together of our building, my wife mentioned a contractor who had constructed several apartment houses in our neighborhood. We knew of him only by the name that appeared on the signs adjacent to the building under construction, but realized that if we were living in the end, we would not be looking for a contractor. I love that bit. It's fantastic. We promptly forgot this angle. Continuing these periods of daily imagining for several weeks, we both felt we were now fused with our desire and had successfully been living in the end. One day a stranger entered our office and identified himself as the contractor, whose name my wife had mentioned weeks before. In an apologetic manner, he said, I don't know why I stopped here. I normally don't go to see people but rather people come to see me. He explained that he had passed our office often and wondered why there wasn't an apartment building on the corner lot. We assured him we would like very much to have such a building there, but we had no money to put into the project, not even the few hundred dollars it would take for the plans. Our negative response did not faze him and seemingly compelled, he began to figure out and devise ways and means to carry out the job unasked and unencouraged by us. Forgetting the incident, we were quite startled when a few days later this man called, informing us that the plans we were, that plans were completed and that the proposed building would cost us $30,000. Well, we thanked him politely and did absolutely nothing. We knew we had been living imaginative, imaginatively in the end of the completed building and that imagination would assemble that building perfectly without any outside assistance from us. So we were not surprised when the contractor called again the next day to say he had found a set of blueprints in his files that fitted our needs perfectly with a few alterations. 
This, we were informed, would save us the architect's fees for new plans. We thanked him again and still did nothing. Logical thinkers would insist that such a negative response from prospective customers would completely end this matter. Instead, two days later, the contractor called again with the news he had located a finance company willing to cover the necessary loan, with the exception of a few thousand dollars. It sounds incredible, but we still did nothing. For example, not for example, for remember to us, this building was completed and rented and in our imagination, we had not put one penny into its construction. What I love about this story is they don't pick the fruit before it's ripe. They actually keep waiting. And this is what's so great about the um, doctor and his wife is they allow the thing to unfold fully, okay? And this is the component of this story that I really want you to notice. Okay, so to continue, the balance of this tale reads like a sequel to Alice in Wonderland. For the contractor came to our office the next day and said as though presenting us with a gift, you people are going to have that new building anyway. I've decided to finance the balance of the loan myself. If this is agreeable, I'll have my lawyer draw up the papers and you can pay me back out of the net profits from the rentals. This time we did something. We signed the papers and construction began immediately. Most of the apartment units were rented before final completion and all but one occupied the day of completion. We were so thrilled by this seemingly miraculous events of the past few months that for a while we didn't understand this seeming flaw in our imaginal picture. But knowing what we had already accomplished through the power of imagining, we immediately conceived another imaginal scene and in it, this time, instead of showing the party through the unit and hearing the words, we will take it, we ourselves, in imagination, visited tenants who had already moved into that apartment. So see, there's the living in the end, living from it. Rather than trying to get a tenant, they visit a tenant that's already there, which means it's the end result, living from the end, okay? These, these stories have got really good mechanics of how to live from the end, that whole concept of living in the end, breaking it down so you can actually see how that's done. Okay, so in imagination, we visited tenants who had already moved into that apartment. We allowed them to show us through the rooms and heard their pleased and satisfied comments. Three days later, that apartment was rented. Our original imaginary drama had objectified itself in every detail save one and that one became a reality when one month later our friend Mrs X surprised us with a long overdue visit expressing her desire to see our new building. Gladly we took her through and at the end of the tour we heard her speak the line we had heard in our imagination so many weeks before with an emphasis on each word she said doctor I think it's beautiful. Our dreams of 15 years were realized. And we know now that it could have been realized any time within those 15 years if we had known the secret of imagining and how to live in the end of desire. But now it's real, it is realized our one big desire was objectified and we did not put one penny of our own money into it. Dr. M, through the medium of a dream, a controlled waking dream, the doctor and his wife created reality. They learned how to live in their dream house. In fact, now they do. Although help seemingly came from without, meaning from the outside, the course of events was ultimately determined by the imaginal activity of the doctor and his wife. The participants were drawn into their imaginal drama because it was dramatically necessary that they should be. Their imaginal structure demanded it. Oh, I love that story. When I was personally trying to manifest stuff and I wasn't good at manifesting at all, I would read this story over and over and over and break down what they did and applied it to my own situation. Now, Neville talks about here in this story the controlled, vivid, waking dream. So what I'm going to do is down in the description, 
I'm going to put a YouTube that I've already done about use about controlled vivid imagination, how to use the senses for those of you that want to get a little bit more advanced in your imaginal scenes and your visualization, this will assist you to do so because I explain in more depth what Neville is talking about here. Okay, lots of love and may you apply this to, you know, not just manifesting a house but manifesting other things, sharing the mechanics of how Neville does stuff and how it gets applied to situations. This is the part that I want to share with you more and more because then it will accelerate your understanding of how creation works and also accelerate your understanding of how to live in the end of things. Because I know I've said that before, but as it comes up in many different sessions with people and also emails, how do I live in the end? How do I live in the end? How do I live from it? That question comes up a lot. So these stories will assist you with that. Lots of love.